Our project is on the effect that the spinal PSI has a biodiversity equals for farmer. Mud crabs are a native species that are found along the coastlines of North America. They strive off of an increases of food or decreases of pe- predators. Dyspanopeus sai's life cycle is complex as it starts with eggs, develops into the uh, zoea phase, changes into megalopa, and eventually develops into a subadult. After that, its last stage is the adult. According to the Davenport study taken in the late 1800s, Dyspanopeus sai have been found in recent studies, but not studied in the late 19th century to early 20th century. An increase in the amount of mud crabs in recent studies could be due to the fact that there might be less predators or more prey. There could also be an increase in the quality of their environment in general. Most mud crabs feed off of dead organisms and crustaceans like plankton. Our main goal is to find out how an um, an abundance of mud crabs affects the biodiversity of Cold Spring Harbor. We suspect that their large population has come from an increase in the population of their prey. There is an abundance of them in the harbor, and we are curious as to how they affect the biodiversity of the harbor overall. We think that mud crabs are not a beneficial organism because they feed off of vital organisms like barnacles and bivalves. We plan to analyze and compare data on collections done in previous years, as well as to compare our collection to the data of the other groups in our class in Cold Spring Harbor. Bivalves remove harmful things from the water, which helps stabilize the environment and the atmosphere, and mud crabs consume these species. So if there are more mud crabs, then there will be less bivalves and more toxins in the water. Our main goal and our main target is to find out how an abundance of this species affects the biodiversity of Cold Spring Harbor. On September 19th, we went to a spit located near the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. We performed our collection at low tide from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Each group was paired with an esteemed scientist from the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. With the scientists from the DNA Learning Center, we took tubes and buckets to act as collection containers. Large rocks were flipped and moved aside, and then after that, as we walked along the spit, we observed the Spinopia Saia as well as other organisms included in the Davenport study. We plan to collect a small sample of the population in order to limit our impact on the environment. After visiting the spit, we went to the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory to analyze, take pictures, and specifically label each organism using taxonomy. Once we had observed these organisms under this dissection microscope, and taken pictures against the scale to help in identification, we placed all the samples in ethanol for, for preserva- preservation, preservation until the class can begin the process of DNA isolation, DNA sequencing, and barcoding. When we receive the final DNA results for the class, all the information gathered will be placed on a Google spreadsheet so that we can analyze the data from our class collection. Once we can truly identify this species using DNA barcoding and can accurately establish this organism as the species of mud crab, known as the PSI, we can begin to examine the impact on the biodiversity of these crabs in the harbor. Conclusion slash results. Using our collection data, we saw that the PSI were very abundant. Based off of our collection data, we found quite a bit of mud crabs in the locations that we searched. Although the Hispanic PSI were present in the Davenport project, they were not as abundant as they are now. This might be due to the fact that we had more advanced technology than Davenport had. It might be due to an increase in food, or it might be due to a decrease in predators. Either way, the amount of mud crabs in Cold Spring Harbor has gone up. Although we were unable to barcode the organisms ourselves, we did use taxonomy to identify the organisms ourselves. We did this by comparing the organisms we collected to pictures of different species that the lab gave us. In that way, the things we used made us more prepared than Davenport was at the time due to our advanced technology. The barcoding process starts with the DNA extraction, uh, the PCR of the core gene, electrophoresis, and then Sanger sequencing. We also have our collection data and a picture of one of the mud crabs we caught.
And then these are our resources. Yeah, we have a couple of websites where we got our information from, and those helped us construct our presentation. All right, thank you for listening to our presentation, and we hope you enjoyed.